Hey there, thank you for checking out Armorsmith. Uh, this is going to be a brief overview of all the features currently available within the program. Uh, so I'll start off with the main screen here. Uh, you have the option to create a new costume, uh, costumes being essentially the collection of costume parts. Uh, it's essentially the usual flow you would use. Uh, op open costume is if you have a saved costume and you'd like to open it. And import model to unfold is if you just essentially want to import uh, just like a single model and just work with the unfold itself and you're not really interested in building a whole costume. Uh, down here uh, we have our user information. So you can choose between the multiple users that you have set up with the current installation. Uh, you can create more users if you have additional serials uh, or you can edit the profile of your existing user. Inside here, uh, you've got your username and your social media, and that's associated with any file that you save so that uh, after you upload your costume somewhere online, the people that download it can become familiar with some of your other work. Uh, so it's just a way for creators to help promote themselves. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new costume. Now the first thing I want to do is just give a brief overview of all of the elements inside the front end. So over here in the top left, uh, we have essentially our main menu with all of our different options. Uh, this changes based on the different modes that you could be in. Uh, so here for costume, uh, we have the ability to create a new costume, open an existing one, save the current one we're working on, Save as, which is just changing the file name of the current one. Uh, merge is if you have multiple costume files and you'd like to merge them together. Uh, import is if you want to import a 3D model or a Pepakura file to use as a costume part on your costume. And Search One Kira will open up your browser to the One Kira website, which is a great repository of Pepakura files online. Inside of Avatar, which is this guy here, uh, you can either create a new one, open an existing one, or save uh, the one that you're currently working on in case you, you know, want to create different avatars for different people you know or different clients, things like that. And then finally, Contact Us just launches you to uh, thearmoredgarage.com so that you can contact me if uh, you find a bug or you have a suggestion. Next up, uh, these are the buttons that take you between the different modes within Armorsmith. Uh, costume being the base one where you essentially create your costume. Workspaces is where you'd be able to view all the available costume parts uh, and do any operations that you might need to on them. And finally, Unfolds is where you get to view and modify your existing Unfold for whatever costume part you're currently working on. Up here in the top right, uh, after we've loaded costume parts, uh, it'll show you all the parts on the right here and a little thumbnail in here when you select one from the list. Down here on the bottom right, uh, we have the property grid. Uh, and this changes uh, based on the context of whatever you're currently working on. Uh, right now, since we have the avatar up, uh, it shows you all of its properties. Uh, so you can change the gender, uh, the units that you're working in, whether it be metric or imperial, uh, the overall height of the avatar, and then a few measurements that we currently have available to us, which is elbow to wrist, shoulder to elbow, waist to knee, and knee to ankle. Down here at the bottom is where we have our social media information. Um, when a creator has their social media active, these icons light up and you can click on them to take you to their social media. And finally, we have the, the newly added camera controls inside of here, uh, which is currently uh, holding the Alt button and the middle mouse to rotate around the avatar. I've had a lot of requests to use the right mouse button uh, but unfortunately, I have the right mouse button hooked up 
to this context menu right now, but I'm going to sort that out in the future because I know there's a lot of people that would really like to use the right mouse button for camera navigation. Um, the last thing is the rotate avatar down here, which just allows you to rotate the avatar around the platform. Maybe not as necessary now with the camera controls, but could still possibly be useful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by modifying the avatar. The first thing that you can do is adjust the overall height of the avatar. So this is kind of like a broad stroke to figure out essentially uh, what the height of the avatar is. So you kind of set that to what your height is and use that as a starting point. Uh, then what you can do is go in and if you need to, take uh, measurements of all the rest of the body parts. Uh, right now the ones that are exposed are the knee to ankle. So you can adjust that. Uh, you know, adjust knee to thigh. These all obviously modify the overall height because you're changing the length of the legs. Adjust the shoulders to biceps. And finally the last one that's currently exposed is the forearm one. Over on the right, by editing uh, things inside the property grid, you can switch between genders, the metric or imperial, which you can see now it's displayed as 4.7 inches. Or you can manually type in the measurements. Um, Right now, all these measurements are either in inches or imperial or uh, centimeters or metric. Uh, I've had a few requests to be able to put in like feet and then inches for these, so I'm definitely going to get that set up as soon as I have time. Another thing you can do is if you double click on a part, it will zoom the camera in. So if you're working on a specific area, you can double click it, zoom in, and make any adjustments. The camera pivot point is based on the object, or the part that's currently selected. So as you can see, you can zoom around, navigate, and make any adjustments that you need to make. Uh, by double clicking anywhere else, it'll take you back to the full zoomed out camera. Okay, let's go ahead and start making a costume. We'll start off by importing a few parts. Do that by clicking this top left button, Costume, Import. I'm going to import the chest, the back, and the helmet. So now you can see we have our imported parts available up here. And if we cycle through them, you can see the thumbnails. To attach a part, uh, simply click on the thumbnail and drag it over to the attachment point on the avatar. Now obviously we're inside the chest here, so what we're going to want to do is translate that part out a little bit so that it's not penetrating through the chest of the, the avatar. So we select it, we choose translate, which is this button up here, and then we just click the axis we want to modify, and in this case it's the Z axis, which you can see displayed to the right there, and we're just going to offset that out a little bit. Also going to offset it down a little bit, I think. There we go. That's perfect. Now maybe I'll take a minute and just quickly go over what the different buttons here do. We have translate, which as you just saw, translated the part. Rotate, which allows you to rotate around the three different axes. Scale, 
which by default is a uniform scale, but if you click the button multiple times, you can switch between the different axes so that you can do a non-uniform scale. This button here is to make the part visible or invisible. And finally, this is the delete button. So that allows you to delete a costume part off of the avatar. Okay, now let's go ahead and attach the helmet. You can see in the thumbnail that the orientation of the helmet uh, isn't going to be right for when we connect it on here. So what I'm going to need to do is rotate. So we'll click the rotation button. And I need to rotate along this axis here. So we'll do that rotation first. And then another rotation along this axis so that we can spin it around to the front. There we go. And I think that helmet is a little bit too big, so why don't we go ahead and do a scale as well. Make sure it's uniform scale, which is what I currently want to do, and just grab and scale. There we go, that's perfect. Now why don't we just finish this up by attaching the back. Perfect. We're ready to go. Let's move on to the workspace view. So this is the workspace view. I'll give a quick overview of what the UI elements are on this screen. Here we have the navigation between the parts. In the bottom left corner, you can also quickly jump to a part if you if you want a quick navigation. So you just click on the part that you want to jump to, it'll shift over into focus. On the right here, it shows a list of all the different unfolds that are available for this uh, piece of geometry. Uh, currently, we only support one unfold uh, per each costume part, but the plan is to add multiple unfolds so that you would be able to have, say, your paper and your foam unfolds all together in one file. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, uh, I'm going to switch over to the chest here, and let's create an unfold for it. And that's going to pop us over to the unfold view. Again, if at any time you want to switch between the different states, you can just use these buttons in the top left. Okay, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the workspace view. On the left we have the geometry. You can rotate the camera around by using Alt plus the middle mouse button and then just clicking and dragging. Again, like the other view, I will be adding the right click uh, and drag uh, camera rotation option uh, as soon as I have time. In the middle, we have the divider that you can drag to adjust the size of each of the windows. And on the right, uh, we have the unfold. And down in the bottom corner, we have all the properties associated with that unfold. So you can see uh, here, edge render threshold is um, it essentially decides what line should essentially be a fold line and you can kind of adjust that the lower you go the less hard fold lines you have which is good for foam, uh, foam unfolds. The next thing we have is show registration marks. This might be a new one for you. Um, I actually picked this up uh, from Evil Ted which is a fantastic builder. If you haven't seen him you should definitely check out his YouTube channel. Uh, the idea behind the registration marks is if you're doing a foam build, uh, you could draw a little mark at each of these places, and then when you're connecting up the other side, you kind of have some indication of where those pieces need to come back together when you're gluing them. Uh, show edge IDs just toggles the edge IDs on and off. Edge 
Bojangles is another new one uh, that my buddy Dave came up with. And what that does is it tells you the angle between this piece and the other piece. So that again, if you're doing a foam build, you know exactly how much of a bevel to cut. Uh, Edge ID font size just changes the size of the font. Uh, show tabs is another pretty standard one. allows you to turn the tabs on and off, whether you're doing a paper or a foam unfold. Uh, if you do have the tabs on, you can adjust the size of them. Finally, this last one, the object color. Um, maybe it's not super useful, but it allows you to change the color of the part. Um, maybe it's something nice that you could, you know, if you kind of want to get your, your basic color ideas down for in the actual costume mode, you can kind of set those colors and get a general idea of what your piece is going to look like. Then we have the print sizes for, for the paper. You can choose between most of the standard paper formats. Uh, adjust the margin sizes. So if I zoom out here, and adjust that. You can see it adjusts the workable space because it's changing what the margins will be when you go to print. Next up, uh, why don't we actually edit this unfold a little bit? So we have our quick buttons down here for selecting our tools. You can see up in the top right corner, it lets you know what the current active tool is. If you don't want to use these quick access buttons, you can also right click and it gives you the different options. Uh, there's keyboard shortcuts which each, for each one that show up down at the bottom there. Uh, T, R, and J. Or alternatively, you also have the option of pressing the numbers in the top left corner. Uh, my plan is to add these quick bars to all the different modes with, with quick access to the tools. Kind of like your standard MMO uh, quick access toolbar. Okay, so let's switch over to the join cut tool to give you an idea of how that works. So you can go in and cut up your parts. So that you can start to create the unfold that you want to make. Double clicking on the edge causes it to join. Uh, a single click will cut. You can also do it in the 3D view. And of course, uh, there's undo and redo. Uh, Control Z or Control Y. Uh, moving the parts around, you just click on a part and you can drag it. You can select multiple parts by dragging the mouse to highlight all the parts you want to move around. Or you can also select multiple parts by holding down control and selecting those parts. For rotation, it shows you a number of points. So what you do is you click one point and then that essentially creates an anchor point and then you click another point and you can rotate around that anchor point. This also works with multiple objects. Click an anchor point, click another point, and they'll all rotate around that, that anchor point. I think that about wraps it up for the initial overview of Armorsmith. Uh, if you have any questions, just make sure to send me an email. Uh, it's thearmorgarage at gmail.com or leave a comment on this video, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can.
thanks for watching.